All right, let's talk about Gardner Minshew and the Indianapolis Colts here. The Colts, who are in a playoff spot if the season ended today, I did my, uh, you know, prediction things where I went through the ESPN playoff machine, picked every game, and I had the Colts making the playoffs. I did. I think that they could make the playoffs this year. Of course, a big part of this is, uh, you know, it has to come down to Gardner Minshew playing solid football, and, and, and that's all they need. They don't need him to play like a superstar. They need him to play all right, and I thought he played well against Tampa Bay. Let's talk about what he did well. For one thing, it was just the simple stuff. Take what the defense gives you. This is something that Minshew has done a very good job of over his career. You know, he was a sixth-round pick, right? So he had to get good immediately, and if he wasn't, then he wasn't going to stick around in the NFL for a while. So him being able to read defense as well and put the ball in the right spot is c crucial to just his survival and why he's still in the league, let alone you know getting his team into a playoff spot. This play, there's a couple things to note. For one thing, it's, you know, you have backup corner Zion McCollum going up one-on-one -on -one against Michael Pittman, which if you see that for Gardner Minshew, you should be throwing it there anyway. But especially in this scenario, because the concept, uh, you know, that uh, curl route against this coverage, you see how there's, you know, an area there. No one's really covering that area of the field. So because of that, there's really two reasons why you should be putting the ball in this direction if you're Gardner Minshew. So Minshew takes a snap, immediately reads it, gets the ball over there, and you see that the corner is just too far off right now. Gardner Minshew got it over there quick enough, and that's a really important aspect of football, right? Getting the ball out of your hands quickly, and that's what Minshew did on this play. As you see, it's caught. They're able to pick up a nice little completion there, and you know they were able to do that pretty consistently in this game. When Tampa Bay ch tried to play zone, really, Minshew was able to kind of pick them apart a little bit. So because of that, that's what you like to see if you're a if you're a Colts fan. And also heading over here, he even made some plays, and that's another aspect of how he's been able to you know be a six round pick who's now been kind of you know he's considered a sort of a high quality backup at this point and a big part of it too is he can make some off script plays and this is going to be an example of it watch as when Minshew takes the snap he's going to look down the field doesn't love what he sees you know the pass rush kind of comes here it's it, he's able to navigate it well so he does a good job but at this point third down and 10 I mean a lot of players would quite frankly struggle in this situation or maybe just take a sack say you know what let's punt live to see another you know day it is what it is but watch Minshew scramble outside the pocket, eventually finds an open receiver who doesn't pick up the first down, but came very close, was about a yard away from picking up the first down. They eventually went for it and converted the first down uh, after that. So good stuff there by Gardner Minshew uh, to you know give them an opportunity to go for it on fourth. Also, something like this is definitely a playmaker type of play where what's going to happen is they're actually even designing it a little bit around Minshew, running a design rollout, which like, again, I'm not going to sit here and say he's Lamar Jackson, right? But he can move a little. He can. This is an aspect of his game. Watch as Minshew's going to take the snap. He is going to roll out. And, you know, the two receivers he was looking at, neither one of them are really open. You could throw up a jump ball. You know, not the worst idea in the world. But Minshew doesn't want to do that on a third and goal. Because especially, you know, at the two-yard line, let's be honest, they're going to go for it if they don't get this here, right? So you really have two chances. Don't want to throw the second one away just because this one isn't open. And plus, you just have time. You don't have to make a rush decision right now. No one's on you. So let's just see what happens in another second or two. Watch how he scrambles up, and you see it's linebacker Devin White, who's, you know, quickly gained ground. Minshew can't get to the edge if he wants to get to a, you know, I think, again, a lot of quarterbacks might try to get to the edge, but you're probably just going to get clobbered if you do that. No one's really open. There is a tight end who's just emerged, but you'd have to throw across your body, and, and I don't blame Minshew for not noticing that. And there would be traffic in front. You know, Devin, he'd have to throw it over Devin White, so not really an option, even though it kind of looks like it is. But watch Minshew sidestep Devin White, gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Hey, that's a play, right? Being able to make something happen is a very important aspect of being able to have a good football team, especially one like, listen, I think the Colts receiving core has, you know, it, it's not a complete, you know, black void, right? I mean, I think Josh Downs is having a really good rookie year, uh, and I like Michael Pittman a lot. Uh, Alec Pierce has been kind of disappointing, to be honest, but he can still make the occasional play. But still, it's not like this is Cincinnati's receiving core, right? And so having someone like Gardner who can, you know, make things happen is just really 
key for the Colts. Also heading over to something like this, what's going to happen is it's going to be a zone coverage play. They're going to run play action and then try to throw over the linebacker who they've hopefully gotten out of position, right? That's how this play is designed to work. Okay, cool. Makes sense. And it's Michael Pittman, your number one receiver, who you're trying to throw the football to. So Gardner Minshew takes the snap. He runs the play action, is going to get over to this point where he's throwing it. And I mean, this is a mailbox throw, right? You got to get it over the linebacker. Can't overthrow it. Have to make sure your receiver can make the grab. This is a difficult play for Minshew to make. However, as you see, beautifully thrown football uh, does not end up being a completion. Uh, Tampa Bay knocked it out at the end there. That was not ruled a catch and fumble. It was ruled an incomplete pass. But uh, still, good stuff from Gardner Minshew, right? To be able to pull that kind of thing off is, is really impressive by him. So the fact that he can do this is, I think, helping the Colts. Listen, I don't think Gardner Minshew has been perfect. I, I don't. I think that there have been issues with Gardner Minshew. And even in this game, which I said I thought he was pretty good in, you know, the interception itself, that wasn't his fault. That was kind of a fluky play. He did still put the ball in harm's way at times. And, and I would say that, you know, that's been kind of the biggest issue is he does have those games where he puts the ball in harm's way, including, you know, against Jacksonville, he had seven turnover-worthy plays and then five turnover-worthy plays against Cleveland the next week. Since then, he had been pretty good, did have two turnover-worthy plays in this game as well. Let's talk about one of them. As you see Minshew on this play, it's a third down and 10. Colts are currently up seven points. It's a concept designed to beat zone coverage. As I said, these have been typically working so far in this game. So let's see how this one is going to work. Minshew takes the snap, uh, and it's going to be off screen, but we'll see once he fires this one. Uh, it's Antoine Winfield, the uh, safety. He stepped in on this play. So to be honest, I'm not sure if Alec Pierce was open anyway. Kind of a risky throw to make regardless, but especially given, uh, you know, where Winfield stepped in. I'm assuming Minshew just didn't see this, and, and these are the mistakes you have to cut down on. Luckily for Minshew, Pierce did a good job of, you know, giving a hit to Winfield, causing Winfield to drop the football. Uh, so, you know, didn't get the turnover registered, but still do have to make sure that you don't make those mistakes too frequently here. Uh, and again, you know, he had the, the three interception game against Jacksonville, has thrown an interception uh, in, you know, what, uh, f five out of the last six weeks. So you like to see him cut down on that. That's been kind of his biggest issue. But outside of that, he's been very good. And so I would still say that Minshew has been, you know, the high quality backup uh, label that's been put on him. I agree. I, I think that's how he's been. And I think that he can, you know, get better. And he has been playing better since that rough, you know, back to back week stretch, in my opinion. And hopefully, as long as he can continue to play better, uh, I do think this Colts team is a, they're a legitimate playoff contender. I really think that. Again, they're currently uh, six and five. So I think just going four and two down the stretch, I think that would get them in uh, due to tiebreakers that are a little bit favorable in their scenario. They play the Titans and then the Joe Burrowless Bengals. So they could easily be eight and five at that point. Pittsburgh, the following week, would be kind of the big game because the winner of that game might be who gets into the playoffs, quite frankly. But if they can pull that one off, you play Atlanta, Las Vegas, and Houston, you could at least get another one of those wins. And I, I do think the Colts could be a playoff team. Uh, I think it's possible as long as Minshew is still good Gardner Minshew throughout the rest of the season. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.